This is the word of the Lord. Thanks to us. Margaret, do keep that open. There's a lot in there. So uh, let's pray that God would help us. And uh, pray based on last, last week, chapter 2, verse 1. We must pay more careful attention, therefore, to what we have heard, so that we do not drift away. And so, Lord, as we have heard your word, we pray you'd help us pay attention to it, to understand it, to rejoice in it, to put it into practice, <coughs> that you will give us a hunger for your word, so that we do not drift away from the faith, but instead draw closer to Jesus. Amen. What have all those uh, people got in common on there? Yeah, yeah, they're all in the family. Oh, there's, there's a brother in each of them. Um, there's Ezra, big brother. Um, this morning, uh, Naomi hit her head. And um, who did she want to cuddle from? Ezra, not daddy, Ezra. Although when she's had a cuddle, she just shoves him away. <laughs> Remember these guys? To me, to you. Um, uh, these are, this is Band of Brothers, I don't know if you've ever watched the series. They're not actually brothers by birth, but, but the idea is that, you know, they are they're brothers because they're in it together. They're there for each other. And isn't it sad, you know, recently Prince Harry has released that book Spare and, and we've had these um, interviews and it's really sad because you watch them and you think, that's not what brothers should do. You know, don't we long for brothers who, who are caring, who are, who are loving, who, who protect us and, and look after us. And maybe, maybe you've got a brother and, and you wish they were more like that. I don't know, maybe, uh, maybe you wish you had a brother like that, someone who'd lead you and, and be a big brother and care for you. Well, well, in that passage we just read, the big idea really is that for Christians, Jesus is our brother. He's our caring, perfect, big brother. <laughs> and when we trust in him, we have an amazing privilege of being in his family, of calling him our brother, of calling God our father. And really all that we're going to do this morning is unpack how amazing it is to have Jesus as our brother. And the first point is this, Jesus became our brother. He became our brother. There's a guy called uh, Sean Ellis. I don't know if you've read any of his books or watched the programs about him. He's called the man who lives with wolves. He, he, he adopted a wolf pack. He, uh, he lives with them. He, does, he only eats meat. Sounds great to me. Uh, he, uh, he doesn't wash. Sounds even better to me. Um, he howls with them, plays with them. He's almost wanting to become a wolf. But ultimately, he will never be a wolf, will he? He'll always be a person. Jesus, the Son of God, divine we saw last week. That very first Christmas came to live among us. But as we read the Bible, it's, he's not like Sean Ellis. He wasn't sort of pretending to be a human being. He wasn't sort of doing human things, but actually being something separate. The Bible says that Jesus actually became human. He became like us. He took on a human nature. So Jesus had eyes and feet and a small intestine. He experienced growing pains. He cried. He got hungry. He went to the toilets. He had real flesh and real blood. He could suffer and he could die. What's sometimes called by Christians the incarnation. Carne is like the word for meat, isn't it? If you go to, to Europe or whatever, carne, the meat course. He took on flesh. He became fully human. And that's amazing because last week we saw just how amazing and mighty Jesus is. He's the son of God who's eternally existent. 
He made the universe and sustains it. He is ruler of everything and will judge everything. He has all power and glory. And yet he came to live as a human being. And he did that so he could become our brother. Maybe uh, you're here this morning and, and you're not sure about all this Christian stuff. You think, what's this all about? I've just come in, but, but, but you know, I maybe have a Christian background, a bit like Charlotte was saying, but, but I'm not sure I know about having a trust in Jesus. I'm not sure I'm there. Maybe you think Christianity is a list of rules or, or rituals or beliefs. But please know that at the heart of Christianity isn't ritual or rule. It is a relationship with Jesus, a personal trust in him as our brother. Jesus, yes, he is Lord. Jesus is king. He's savior. But he is also our brother when we put our trust in him. We can know him as our brother. So Jesus became our brother. He became like us in every way. But he didn't actually become like us in every single way. There was one way in which Jesus didn't become like us. What do you think that was? He never sinned. If he was a sinner like us, he couldn't help us. He'd be like the blind leaving the blinds. But Jesus just didn't become our brother. He became our perfect brother. Now, I don't know if you're into, into baking. I know we've got kids. We always try and uh, bake them like a special birthday cake. And you look them up on uh, the internet, don't you, on Pinterest or, or Google or something like that. Uh, and there's often a big difference between the expectation and the reality. So, you know, you see this amazing snowman. And then you think, I'll make that. And in reality, maybe not. I love that. <laughs> If I made the cake, that is what Well, the other day I was told that on the KFC app, I can get 50% off a Zynga Tower meal. I think it was on Facebook. And I was reading the comments and everyone was going, don't look like that in reality. No, I near that big. <laughs> reality is often a bit disappointing. And in, uh, in this passage of Hebrews, uh, the writer, he quotes Psalm 8, and in Psalm 8 is the sort of, I guess, the expectation of what humanity should be like. So just have a look at verse, um, uh, verse 6. There is a place where someone has testified, what is man that you're mindful of him, the son of man that you care for him? You made him a little lower than the angels, you crowned him with glory and honour and put everything under his feet. So this is telling us what, what God met, made mankind to be like, the expectation. He made us to rule the world perfectly under his rule. He made us to be glorious and have honor and behave honorably. He made us to live as his creatures and fill the earth and subdue it and rule it. And yet, if we look around, that's not what the world is like, is it? We've made a mess of the world. It is not easy to rule the world. It's hard. In reality, we are sinners who have not lived up to our potential. Uh, and the re reason is because rather than living in, in that joyful obedience to our creator, the Bible says we have rejected our creator, we've disobeyed our creator, and said, I want to rule the world my own way. I want glory on my terms rather than on your terms, God. So we go after the glory of, I don't know, nice stuff or respect of our workmates maybe it's the glory of a big paycheck or a successful child ultimately we we want glory for ourselves on our own terms rather than submitting to God and ruling under his terms 
we've not lived up to the expectation, God's plan for humanity. And so we don't deserve glory, we deserve God's punishment. We're rebels against our creator. And so have a look at verse 8. At the end of verse 8, we were meant to rule and be subject, the world be subject to us, yet at present, we don't see that. We don't see everything subject to mankind. We've ruined it. But here's the good news. When Jesus comes as a man, when Jesus comes as our brother, he lives up to that expectation. In Jesus, we see what humanity should be like. In fact, he's even better. He is our perfect brother. And so verse 9, but we see Jesus who was made a little lower than the angels, who was uh, now crowned with glory and honour. Jesus lived up to that expectation. He's our perfect brother. But it's interesting, that path to glory, what did that look like for Jesus in verse 9? Have a look at verse 9. Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels, now crowned with glory and honour. Why? because he suffered death, so that by the grace of God, he might taste death for everyone. Jesus's path to glory involved suffering, suffering death, then glory. It involved being beaten and mocked and scorned. It involved death on a cross. And he did all of this, if you read the gospels, First and foremost, out of obedience to his father. He obeyed his father's plan and mission to save humanity by suffering and dying and then rising to glory. We, we sang about it in our first song, didn't we? He came from heaven to earth to show the way from the earth to the cross, from the cross to the grave, from the grave <coughs> to the sky. Lord, I lift your name on high. And in fact, in verse 10, look what we're told. In bringing many sons to glory, it was fitting that God, for whom and through whom everything exists, should make the author of their salvation, Jesus, perfect through suffering. So it was, what it's saying is it's because he suffered that Jesus could become our perfect brother. That word perfect, it means complete, fully developed. Jesus' humanity is fully developed because he experienced suffering just as we do, in fact, worse than we do. So Jesus is our perfect brother because he obeyed God all the time, despite that leading to suffering and death. And it, wasn't, and it was an awful death, wasn't it, for Jesus? Crucifixion? One of the worst deaths you could experience at the time, but it, but it was worse than that. Because on the cross, Jesus wasn't just experiencing the pain of Christ's crucifixion. He was experiencing God's punishment and our sins. The sins of all who'd come to trust him. He was dying to take on himself the sins and the punishment they deserve of all his brothers and sisters, of all those trusting Jesus sitting here today. He was experiencing God's anger so we can be forgiven. I remember hearing a story about a, a little girl uh, called Lucy. Lucy was suffering from a rare and serious disease and her only chance of recovery uh, was a, a blood transfusion from her five-year-old brother. Her five-year-old brother had uh, survived that same disease and had the antibodies needed to combat that, that illness. So she needed his blood to live. And the doctors explained that to the little brother and said to the boy, are you willing to, to give your blood to your sister? And he hesitated for a moment and he took a deep breath and he says, yes, I'll do it if it will save her. Well, they hooked them all up, the, the transfusion progressed 
he lay in, in the bed next to his sister and smiled and, and, and the colour returned to her cheek. She was getting better. And then the boy's face grew pale and his smile faded. And he looked up to the doctor and said, will I start to die straight away? You see, he'd, un he'd misunderstood. He thought, he thought he had to give all his blood to his sister. He thought this transfusion would kill him to save her. But he was willing to do it. The brother was willing to die to save his sister. Well, Jesus really did die to save his brothers and sisters. He was willing to shed his blood, to give his life, to save us from our sins, to take the punishment we deserve. <coughs> he was willing to suffer so we can go through. He is our perfect brother. What an amazing brother Jesus is. And why did he all do all that? Uh, we sometimes sing a song here, how deep the Father's love for us. Let's see if you know it. How deep the Father's love for us, how vast beyond all measure, that he should give his only son to make a wretch his treasure. How great the pain of searing loss. The Father turns his face away as wounds which mar the chosen one. Bring many sons to glory. Why did Jesus become our perfect brother and die for us? To bring us to glory. That was his aim. That was the plan. Amazingly, Jesus' life, it didn't end in death. He went through suffering and death, but three days later, he rose again. Death couldn't hold him. Sin couldn't stop him. Satan couldn't bound him. He rose to glory and is now seated at the right hand of the Father in glory. And Jesus now offers to bring us to that same glory. So have a look at verse 14. Since the children have flesh and blood, he too shared in their humanity, so that by his death, he might destroy him who holds the power of death, that is the devil, and free those who all their lives were held in slavery by the fear of death. He came to free us from death. He came to free us from slavery and sin. He came to give us glory. True glory, the Bible says, is not found in the type of car you drive or the, the size of house you own. It's not found in how successful your children and family are. It's not found in how respected you are. It's not even found in how good you are in your deeds. True glory is found walking with Jesus to be with the Father in heaven. When I was uh, younger, I've got, I'm the oldest of two. I've got a younger brother, he's two years younger than me. And any, any other older brothers here? Good boy. It's hard being an older brother, right? You have to fight all the battles first. Okay, you have to go through it all first. And uh, I used to be a skateboarder. My, my, my brother used to, to be a roller skater. And about three or four miles from my house was a skate park. And um, I had to fight um, with my parents to let me go to this skate park. It was, it, was, it was through some dodgy areas, fair enough, to get there. But it was a long way, you had to cross roads. Um, but eventually, you know, I, I knew the way I, I texted him when I got there or whatever, and, and uh, I was allowed to go. Now, my brother, even though he was younger than me, he was allowed to go as well. Why was he allowed to go? Because he went with me. Because I'd gone first, I knew the way, and I would, in theory, keep him safe. I'd lead him to the glory of the grind, the grim skate park in the Northwest probably. And what we see here is, is, is even better, isn't it? The, the road to glory is not an easy one. It will involve suffering. It will involve death. We all die, don't we? 
And it is not a road we can travel on our own. We'd, we'd get distracted or lost or hurt. <clears throat> but with our brother by our side, with Jesus by our side, we can get there safe and sound. He will lead us. He is our pioneer. He is our big brother who shows us the way and keeps us safe to the glory of being with God forever. And he loves being our brother. Have a look at verse 11. Both the one who makes men holy and those who are made holy, so both Jesus and us, are of the same family. Jesus is not ashamed to call them brothers. He loves being our brother. Sometimes I used to, to not like being a big brother. I used to want him to stop cramping my style, yeah? Jesus isn't like that. He loves us being his little brothers and sisters. He loves leading us and being with us. What an awesome big brother. In fact, we see in verse 12 that he sings about us. He loves us that much. He won't leave us behind. He won't try and give us a slip. He'll stick with us. He is our perfect brother who brings us to glory. So what do we need to do? Stick with Jesus, your big brother. <laughs> Stick with him. The, the people who, who first received this letter, um, they were considering giving up on Jesus. We, 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 that's why all the way through Hebrews, we're told how great Jesus is and to not give up. And later we're told that they're considering giving up. That they're considering turning away from the faith. And they're, they're considering doing that because it's not always easy for them as Christians. It's been hard. They've experienced some suffering, some persecution. They're having a, they're having a hard time. And they're thinking, it, wouldn't it be easier if I just didn't bother? And maybe we've thought like that before. I know I have. Maybe you're thinking like that today. Maybe you're on that process of drifting away from Jesus. You, you sat here thinking, it's just too hard. It's, it's too much of a commitment. Wouldn't life be easy apart from Jesus? Or, or, at least, or maybe I could keep Jesus, but sort of sanitize him a bit, water him down. So he's not the Jesus of the Bible, my own sort of personal little Jesus. Well, I hope this passage has helped you. It's been an encouragement to you to stick with Jesus. And as you experience suffering, maybe now, maybe in the future, as you experience doubt, remember to stick with your big brother. There's, there's no other way to glory, by the way. Jesus says, I'm the only way. No other way to glory. But when we stick with our big brother, he leads us home. Don't give up on Jesus. When you're tempted to give up or you're tempted to give in to sin, see your brother, fix your eyes on him. And be encouraged. Just, just have a look at verse 18 as we finish. I love this verse. Because he himself, because Jesus himself suffered when he was tempted, he is able to help those who are being tempted. Isn't that great? Your big brother knows what it's like to be tempted. And he knows what it's like to obey God despite that. And when you need him, when you need Jesus, he comes alongside you, not to criticize you, but to help you. Not to judge you, but to assure you. Not to burden you, but to strengthen you, to walk with you, to help you, to lead you. What a great big brother we have in Jesus, to faith in him. So stick with you, bro. He'll lead you to glory. Let's, let's pray. Let's pray we do that. Lord, we thank you that you were willing, Jesus, to come and become a man. You were willing to suffer and to die as our brother. 
You did that to save us and you lead us to glory. Please help us to walk with you, to stick with you, to fix our eyes on you. And thank you that you help us and walk with us as we do that. Amen. Let's go. Well, that was one fantastic sermon. Thank you. Jesus, our brother. We want to sing one of my favorite hymns now. What a friend we have in Jesus. All our sins and griefs to bear. What a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Let's stand and sing. <laughs>